Dr. Katie Novak, and we are going to unpack the implementation drivers of implementation science and how they help to build a multi-tiered system of support that meets the needs of all students. In the previous videos, we unpacked what the leadership drivers were and how they addressed both adaptive and technical leadership and how it aligns very closely to the new Edeval rubric for school leadership. We also unpacked these competency drivers and how a really robust professional development system that focuses you know, not only on educator evaluation and mentoring and coaching, but that it's all connected, that it's long-term connected. And now we're going to talk about that implementation science and how we can break that down into really concrete steps of increasing implementation of standards-based curriculum in tier one and throughout the tiers. So when we're thinking about implementation drivers, we're talking about, first of all, a tiered continuum of evidence-based practices. In previous videos, we talked about the difference between evidence-based and research-based. And evidence-based really means that there is actual evidence in peer-reviewed gold standard research studies that provides statistical significance that something actually works. The new Every Student Succeeds Act, or ESSA, does require this evidence-based practice. And so we need to ensure that every tier that we have, academically, behaviorally, and socially emotionally, is using evidence-based practices, that we are investing our resources and curriculum and in PD and in practices that are increasing the outcomes of students. And so to do that, we need to have a culture of database decision making to measure the effectiveness of the curriculum and strategies that we are using. There are a number of tools in the MTSS toolkit which will support you in identifying your evidence-based practices. And we provided some examples and some scheduling guidance and also a number of case studies. So in the toolkit, you can look at those examples to understand the importance of really stepping back and thinking about how effective is your tiered continuum of evidence-based practices. It's also really important to focus on implementation fidelity. Once you have adopted an evidence-based practice or product or solution, you have to determine, are we using it with fidelity? And are we getting feedback on its effectiveness with students? And so you wanna think about this concept of feedback loops. How often are we always circling back with educators to learn more about how they are doing with this evidence-based process or practice? It is totally intertwined with educator evaluation, with database decision making. And what you're going to notice is there's a lot of like overlap because what we're doing is we're creating a system where everything is integrated. And so as we think about feedback loops, it's really important to look at the tools to determine, do you have feedback loops in place? Is there a way to measure implementation fidelity? Is there a way to get feedback and build shared responsibility for how that implementation is going? The next aspect is this concept of database decision making. Database decision making, of course, is important when we're thinking about student interventions. It's also really important when we think about implementation fidelity, teacher professional development, or how we're doing based on our district or school improvement plan. And so we want to make sure that we have many robust sources of data that we can triangulate both quantitatively and qualitatively. So we're really embracing stakeholder feedback. We're focused on distributed leadership and having the voices of multiple stakeholders coming forward at the decision-making table, and that also we're very responsive to student data and student outcomes on a number of different measures. And lastly, we're focused on standards-based curriculum design. We do have the Massachusetts State Frameworks, and all of those are really about providing all students with options and choices to meet rigorous state standards so that they can be future ready. So as we think about adopting really, really evidence-based practices, we also have to make sure that those evidence-based practices are standards-based, that we're implementing them with fidelity, that we have feedback loops to ensure that our entire stakeholder group is responsible for ensuring that that fidelity is increasing the outcomes of all students. And we do that by creating a schedule and a culture of database decision making. And all of this, again, is really important to build on each other. So we have this implementation science that we're focused on, really having strong, effective leadership, both adaptive and technical, ensuring we have competency drivers to ensure for really robust ed eval, teacher professional development, mentoring and coaching, and also that we have the things in place necessary to ensure that all students have standards-based curriculum and instruction in Tier 1, and also to make sure that there is evidence-based in Tier 1, as, as well as evidence-based in our targeted interventions academically, behaviorally, and socially-emotionally for all students.